What's going on, everybody? KSA Chris here, Real Estate Blitz. Want to do a quick video for you. Uh, got a really cool little question that came in, and I thought it was uh, appropriate considering that I got asked by one of our uh, interns that are in here right now uh, something pretty similar. So this morning, as I'm as I'm coming into work, uh, one of the interns asked me, he says, you know, these people want to go see a house, uh, trying to get them pre-approved. You know, what what are your thoughts? So I told him my thoughts, and then I get this one in. It says. Uh, why do buyers get offended uh, when asked for a pre-approval letter prior to seeing the house on a property? And, you know, it's 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 a decent topic. And, and I don't know uh, if I've ever talked about it. So not only am I going to talk about it a little bit, but Adam's here as well. So I might bring in Adam. Adam does a majority of the buyers on uh, in Kim Stone Associates. And it's 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 a good question. Here's here's my view on pre-approvals being pre-approved. So loan pre-approval in general. Um, not so much a letter, but just knowing that they're pre-approved for a certain amount of money. Um, in my opinion, I don't think an agent should be taking out somebody if they're not pre-approved for a loan. It's it's almost like, you know, you're, you just don't know what the buying power is. So you as an agent, I, I look at time and energy and, and, and time is very important. And also you're, you're, you're looking at, you're, you're going to be investing a certain amount of money if you're driving somebody around, you're picking somebody up, but you're putting in time searching for stuff. You're putting in time following up with them. You're putting in time, time, time. It's a whole bunch of time. And then here it is, they're like, I want to go see this house. So you go see this house, you see five houses, you see 10 houses. They're like, this is the house. This is the one that I want. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I want to buy it. And it turns out they, they, they can't afford it because they weren't pre-approved. So then they get pre-approved. Either A, they're going to be dejected because they can't get the house that they absolutely love and the one that they wanted. Or they're going to be, okay, well, whatever. Let's go look at 10 or 20 more other freaking houses in the price range where now we can't be. And I'm just personally not a fan of that. Uh, I just want to know right up front. This is the way I position. Uh, so th this one in particular was a, a new home buyer. They've never bought a home before. I try to equate uh, to something that they can relate to. So like purchasing a car, you know, most people, not everybody, but most people, you want to know what your buying power is before you show up. It, it, you don't want to go to, uh, you know, you got a job working at the post office and you decide I want to go buy a Lamborghini. So you walk in and like, I want to just go test drive Lamborghinis and, uh, you know, so what can you do for me? My payment, I need to be around 200 bucks a month, I think, you know, so I want to pay this. Like, that's just, it's stupid. It's just stupid. So most people will actually go to their bank. They're going to get a pre-approval and say, this is what I can afford. I can afford $10,000, $15,000, $20,000, $30,000 for a car. Then they go shopping for a car that's going to be within that price point. Houses are no different. It's just on a different, uh, at a different price point, if you want to put it that way. So getting pre-approved shows that person the buying power. So in my opinion, the reason why people get offended is because the agent didn't educate them appropriately or annihilate the objections that they were putting out. So I would say, hey, by the way, have you been pre-approved? Uh, no. Why should I be pre-approved? No, I want to wait until. So they're going to come up with some type of an objection. It's your job to educate them to annihilate that objection so they aren't offended. If they get offended after that, it's because you didn't educate them appropriately. If they get offended after you educate them, you may not want to you may not want to work with them. <laughs> OK, because the odds are good if they're just pissy and they're like, no, I know what I want and this is what I'm doing. Well, if you know everything, then why are you, why are you calling me? Um, but that's just my opinion. Adam, you want to add in anything? Want to jump in here? Because I know you do a ton of buyers. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So when you know you're going through the process of qualifying the buyer and the initial conversation, it's more about the tones and the uh, stress or the the fear that you're experiencing when you're having these conversations um, and how you present that question. You know, and as you're qualifying them, as you're asking them questions about you know their goals in the next purchase, you can lead into um, you know what price range are you thinking about sitting at. And then as they answer that question, okay, great. So if you already talked to a lender and you shake your head yes, and then they start shaking their head yes or no, but it's a general way to try and ease into that conversation um, rather than just smacking them right between the eyes and saying, hey, do you have money to buy this thing or not? You know what I mean? So really just understanding um, the body cues and the body language to try and you know ease into that conversation. But you definitely want to ask that question. Um, I would only recommend showing them maybe one time, you know, without them speaking with a lender. Um, I love, you know, taking people out at least once to try and really lock them in once they meet me and I have a chance to try and really understand, you know, their concerns and frustrations. That usually will help me lead them down that path. 
Um, but if they're still unwilling to talk to a lender after that, I will typically, um, you know, keep beating into their head that they need to speak with a lender as nicely as possible. Um, I typically won't take them out again though after that. Yeah, cool. Thanks, man. Appreciate the input. So I think Adam brought up a good point. Like I, I, I just so I view it as A, B, C, D, and F clients. Uh, they start off as an A client, and if they just won't allow me, if they're if they're not coachable. So first off, why are you going to hire somebody uh, as a real estate agent? It's because you're looking for a professional, right? You want somebody that's going to guide you down the path, especially if you're a first time home buyer. And to me, if you're not going to listen to what I have to say, considering that this is what I do all day as my full time job, um, and you're just you're you're not my A client anymore. I'm not going to spend as much time or energy or money on you, and you're going to start moving right down the rung. My F clients, I just don't spend time with them because I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I have too many other clients that really want to get things done. I really want to listen. They want to be coachable and they want to ensure that they get exactly what they're looking for. That's why they hired a professional in the first place. So that's all I got today. Appreciate you watching. Uh, I'm going to be throwing this up on YouTube here pretty soon. So if you didn't see it on Facebook, and usually that's where everybody ends up seeing it anyways, uh, I hope this helped out. And for the person that sent out this, um, this question, I'll make sure I hit you up and let you know that I posted up for you. Appreciate it. See you all later. Have a good one.